Hey guys, Monday morning. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Just going to do an update hand up here on Bitcoin and the majors. Not a whole lot of action. I was looking at the futures. Here we are about three quarters of the way through August and um, intra, intra month volatility has been about 31% from peak to trough. And pretty slow here at the bottom of the range in front of 6,000, just like it was pretty slow in July and June. So we're back to this kind of low vol environment from a cyclical standpoint i don't see a whole lot here to get that excited about on the upside until we get closer to september you have a convergence of clearly being on the what we call the right hand side or starting to turn up the sine wave the larger 8.6 month wave as we move into september then we also have a convergence of these two other cycles. So that happens to be September 18th and 17th, 18th, all right in this area, I think is setting up to be a major turning point. It could be to the downside, it could be the upside. From a trend perspective, clearly the what we call the TMS and the long-term lower highs or the, the pivot that needs to be taken out is here right in front of our pie cycle, this green line into this 83, 8400 area. You're going to have the 200 here, which everybody's going to have also, which is kind of around 8,000. Uh, as far as the oscillator and, and this rhythm, we have cycle moving up, which actually started last week. And let's actually check the weekly. I know that's kind of hard to see with all the waves on there. Uh, let's actually go to the bands here to see. So here we see the daily cycle picking up again. We go to the weekly. Still holding on to this major 6,000 level. I mean, the more times we test it, you know, in theory, that's supposed to be greater probability that it breaks. Um, I like these two holds here, and then we basically quadruple bottom. So. Um, I mean, we're really just basing, but the the pivot that I want us to pay attention to longer term, we've talked about it several times, is this this area. So there's your there's your bottom base or wedge, and if you know if we look at a different log scale, you can still see that this weekly trend is still in place. That's why we've never said that we're in a long term bear market in Bitcoin. We're still in a long term bull market. But this is this is the critical area. It's not just six thousand. You can take it to five thousand. It's kind of what we talked about. That's an area on the downside. But on the on the up, these are the lower highs that have mattered. There's a lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. So we're putting in this long term swing line, as we call it. Maybe we bounce, put in another subsequent lower high. That's certainly possible. But at some point, when this consolidation turns, if and when you start to make higher highs, that'll be the signal that um, to get more aggressive on the long side and that some momentum will return to the market. We just don't have higher highs yet, so it is what it is. That's kind of what we're trapped in. If we want to look at the futures market, which is kind of where we do a little bit more near-term or intermediate-term trading, this is the four hour chart. Uh, I'll go to the daily <clears throat> just to see the ebb and flow is pretty good here. This daily oscillator does a really good job to kind of catch these cycles. All right. So we were high within the cycle here. We were low within the cycle down here. And you can see we keep holding the 6,000 area in futures. Um, but when we rally and we get to the top end of some of these what we call risk ranges and you get high within the oscillator, you want to be, you know, if you're buying well down here like we were, we we're taking some off. If you're playing hedges short side, that makes sense right here. Covering into the lows, covering into the lows. So this creates a pretty nice rhythm. So obviously why we use it and that's still cycling up from yesterday or from last week. Uh, we zoom in here. I've kind of drawn. These are regression channels. So it gives you a good, 
a good feel for the average price around the mean and it puts it out different standard deviations but it tends to capture the what we call the risk range so you're low within the range down here you're high within the range here we actually started a new intermediate term uptrend this was high in the range this was bottom of the range low high low high high within the range low within the range so as we zoom in here, I'll go to like the four hour. We're coming, this kind of the 6700 area is showing up to be kind of the next intermediate term pivot. So depending on how you play it, I mean, this, this action has gotten really quiet. So actually we were buying, I was buying here, trying to get more aggressive thinking that we were going to catch the 30 day and maybe continue higher. We couldn't hold. I bought some more at pie, right? Came out of some futures and then we broke that low and I actually took off half of my risk, stopped out on half of my position. And I haven't put those I haven't put that risk back on. I haven't put those contracts back on. Even though we tested 6000 again, I'm just really want to wait to see us get back above it's kind of watermark and you can see that the bands right here are all rolled over negative it's showing you the intermediate term downtrend and then this was a pretty prominent lower high and you can see we haven't gotten above there the bands are all right here you have pi right here so until you can get the market back above that you're probably not going to see any intermediate term momentum like we had coming off the lows last time here in the middle of july so this is an area here where, depending on how you play it, you can hedge, you can take a look at some shorts if you're shorting this stuff at all. I mean, I, I sold a little bit of futures here, covered some, just near-term trading. I'll probably lighten up on a little bit more of my long here and actually sell a couple more short pieces. And... And if and when we can make a higher high and start making higher lows, then I'll get more aggressive on the long side. So kind of a mixed bag, guys. You have a long-term bull market. You have an intermediate-term downtrend. You really want to day trade this stuff. I mean, you don't have the greatest liquidity, but we were high within the range up here. Covered some back at Pi this morning. Makes sense. We've had some pretty decent holds of Pi. In and around this dotted blue line. All right, so you're pretty overbought here. Oversold, overbought, oversold, overbought, oversold. So again, I'll be a seller up here in this area. If we look at Ethereum, just to kind of hit on the last of the majors. Ethereum broke this higher low. This is the weekly chart. Couldn't hold 350. It's actually technically long-term bearish now. So whereas BTC has held 5,000, 6,000, this is technically in a long-term downtrend now. It's the first time I think that's ever happened on Ethereum. Now, it doesn't mean I want to be bearish and short. Um, it just is what it is. I'm kind of looking to see if we can hold this base. You would expect to see the market kind of turn. But I think it's going to be more dependent on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin can't hold five. 5,000, 6,000, no reason to think Ether couldn't be back down at 100. So this is a pretty bad technical break here, guys, at three, three and a quarter, 350. Long, the long term, that's a new lower low. We could see the daily has been negative as far as the bands for a while. Um, couldn't hold a lot of levels, just cracked the new lower lows. I mean, for as popular and market cap and the liquidity and the amount of developers and the amount of users of ethereum and you know this is pretty sad to see it performing like an altcoin that's in the 200th percentile as far as a market cap i mean it trades like a coin or an altcoin that has nobody working on their project so it doesn't trade good at all you can watch this bottoming tail here 250 I just don't like buying things and they keep making lower lows. So not being able to hold 350 and cut some risk, move to the sidelines. 
my attitude is it's, it needs to prove itself again before I commit any more capital to it. So that that means you need to start seeing higher lows and higher highs. Right now, we don't have that. Um, it's okay to just wait. You don't always have to try to be in here and being a hero, buying every lower low. It's just that doesn't work. So over the long term, is it time to go contrarian? You just you can't be aggressive when we're at lower lows consistently. It's it's more of the same here on Litecoin. Litecoin was the first to break. Couldn't hold the bands up here at a hundred. Um, this looks nasty. I mean. Trying to pick a bottom, I guess. I mean, you can sit at home and try to do that on your couch and figure out how that feels. But if you get down to 30, 40, um, maybe there's support down there. I mean, we did have this last breakout in Litecoin last year that felt really like a, it was a major move all the way up to 90, and then we collapsed back down to 30. So you can look at some support there. Maybe we'll get involved, kind of try to trade it around. Um, we'll see I kind of want to I'd rather stay focused on BTC so the, the new intermediate term range is really 50 to 62 so you're kind of smack in the middle Maybe you look to to nibble if if you want down closer to fifty. If we look at Litecoin versus BTC, well, let me do Coin Cash next. BTC, <clears throat> or sorry, Bitcoin Cash. It broke its weekly levels and its lows from April, but it's not as it's not at the it's not at lower lows as pronounced as Ethereum and Litecoin. It doesn't make it bullish. I mean, we still have a descending eight. We've got lower highs. Just noticing technically where the structure is. Again, nothing but lower highs and lower lows. So, you know, why do you need to be aggressively long here until at least we start to see the market turn up? Um... Low support there is 470. There's not much to look at below that level. On a relative value basis, now you can see Litecoin really getting back to levels that looks really pretty cheap, BTC. So let's see, as if we get back to this 0 .6, 0 0.006 level, Litecoin versus Bitcoin, let's see where Litecoin is versus the dollar at that point. Um, that might be a nice contrarian long. Um, that would make sense to look at Litecoin down here. Ethereum, whew, couldn't hold, sorry, that's not versus BTC. Couldn't hold, I know it couldn't hold this 0.5 level. And now it looks to be on the same path to maybe I mean, that's pretty crazy to get 0.02 to 0.03 cents on BTC. So I think you look to buy Ethereum also if we can retest a little bit lower down here. I mean, you're already seeing levels that are pretty cheap on a relative value basis. So um, this is what it is. And Bitcoin Cash versus BTC, same thing. Clearly, Bitcoin's dominating outperforming um, again this doesn't look as oversold and as cheap as ethereum and litecoin but anyway guys hope this helps um i'll keep you posted on the future side in the room and good luck out there